Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one for you lined up here today. And all I'm going to tell you is, is Goldman Sachs, which really handles more than $2 trillion assets under management, reveals that Ripple is a global settlement network. And with that, let's roll that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove and everything that we're talking about here today and so much more. Make sure you definitely follow us on Twitter and here on the channel. A lot of news that we cover. All right, so here we go. $1.5 trillion plus is in the cryptocurrency market space collectively. That is up from the $1.3, $1.2 line we were at over the weekend. So we are seeing some money return back to the space. However, we have not hit back at the $2.5 trillion plus where we were before Elon Musk comments towards Bitcoin and then the news out of China that told us that they were changing up and not letting financial companies, institutions engage in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin uh, transactions. So now let's take a look here. We see the price of Bitcoin is fighting at 38,003 right now. It's up 9.87% on 24 hour, jumping down right now to the number seven spot because we got a lot to cover and I want to make sure we get it in. XRP is at 88 cents right now, 0.8859. We're up 21.43% right now, 21.43% on the 24 hour. And we're still off by 33% on the seven day, but you can see there's quite a bit of a recovery here since late last night. So let's go ahead and get into the ranging right now. Right now we're ranging between 65 cents and 88 cents. You'll remember that we covered here, the technical analysts, the experts have spoken. They have told us to watch out for the 70 cent range, the 80 cent range, the 65 cent range. Well, we hit the 65 cent range and we've bounced back at this point. And it looks like we are marching back towards a dollar as we've heard from Credible Crypto, Crypto Wizard, um, Coins Kid, Crypto Bull 2020, and so many others that we're grateful for. So we'll keep an eye on this to see how much further we get. I know that we still have all of those price targets of $272, $5 plus, and $1333 are very much still on the table. Let's go ahead and get started here. Hall of Famer Michael tells us that uh, Bloomberg reports users and developers have been wrangling with Ethereum's carbon footprint problem for as long as it's been around. Now they say several recent breakthroughs will finally enable them to drastically cut energy use in a year or less. Well, listen, I have to tell you, if they can make this happen, it is fantastic news. OK, that is what I want to hear, because the gas fees for e the Ethereum network are not good. And they certainly don't equal what would be a new financial system. And they certainly don't equal what would be an Internet of value because the gas fees are absolutely incredulous. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So, all right. So now with that being said, I think this is good on another front. We know that Ethereum has got in they're staring in the face of competition. Cardano, Flare Networks, XRP Ledger combined with Codius, and I'm sure many other payment networks out here as well. So the fact that they 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 have found a way to become more competitive, staring in the face of that competition, I think the competition and the space for smart contracts and developing on networks is going to get even hotter. And that is exactly what I want to see as an investor in this space. So very good stuff there. I do want to let you guys know, link to Private Investing Made Simple right here has got Uphold back on the board. It's back up there. Uh, guys, I told you about the online home uh, mortgage you can do right there, better.com. Carbon is building parts for Lamborghini. Yeah, when Lambo, when Moon, right? Kraken is getting ready to list not too long from now. I've gotten the word and it is coming online today. You better be ready for it. And it has a new valuation, which is pretty damn impressive. So keep an eye out for that because when you see Kraken and Uphold on here, it does not last long, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you check that out if you're an accredited investor. And if not, contact them and see if you qualify. All right, here we go. 
billionaire David Rubenstein says that uh, it's unrealistic to think that governments will stop cryptocurrency from being what investors want. He believes that cryptocurrency is here to stay. It's not going away as it's clearly something that the market wants. And they, I tell you, this is really well said right here from David. And, uh, you know, this billionaire investor here is recognizing this is a new asset class and it's not going away. The market wants this. And when you have more than two trillion on the normal without some news. And obviously we've experienced some serious volatility over the last week or so here. But the real deal is, is that this market is not going away regardless of the FUD. And in fact, it's coming back stronger today. So now this is a bit of a bleak outlook from uh, Representative uh, Congressman Jim Himes here. And basically uh, he's saying for better or for worse, there's not going to be legislation passed out of the United States Congress anytime soon. I covered this in further detail in the morning video, the first video, Make sure you check that out and the information there. But I do want to just highlight here that, you know, it's always like this in Congress, right? First, it moves slow until it moves very fast. But what I want to say here is, is they better start moving very fast and get somebody some mobile team and sharpen up in there. Start working on some do Sudoku puzzles, right? Let's get it together. Let's get the synapses firing because the reality is federal agencies are not sitting back. Federal Reserve and other financial bodies, the OCC and the FDIC are joining forces to develop unified regulatory framework for crypto in the United States. And it's not the first time they've sat down to do such a thing. But this right here just goes to show to highlight that they are talking about interagency sprint team working on crypto regulation. They are already making a joint effort to create unified framework and a set of definitions for cryptocurrency. Now we know late of last year, 2020 in October, it was announced that the uh, FinCEN and the Federal Reserve put forth a rule to change proposal and it was on the modifying the threshold for which banks must collect store fund transfer information, reducing it from $3,000 to $250 for any transfers that go outside the United States. The proposal would also widen the agency's definition of money to explicitly include cryptocurrencies. Now that is FinCEN and the Federal Reserve we're talking about here. This is not a small matter. Now that happened at the end of last year. I want to read you just this part right here. According to the proposal, since the record keeping and travel rules were first introduced by the agencies, convertible virtual currencies or CVCs, an umbrella term that includes cryptocurrencies, have been introduced to the world while they lack legal tender status which is the equivalent of paper dollars that are roaming the world, floating around the world now, they can still be used to conduct value transfers. This is something I have hammered home for quite a while, is that whatever they come up with for XRP or cryptos in general, if they want to call it money, they can do so, but it will not have the legal tender status of government-issued cash. That's why central bank digital currencies are so important, because they will be the on and off ramps to this digital space. And that doesn't just mean to digital space like to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum. No, 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 no. That means digital stocks. That means tokenized oil. That means tokenized gold. That means security offerings like property, right? All of this stuff is going to have a CBDC in front of it. Yeah, don't believe that. It's still true. Moving on right here, we see the BIS is also working on a paper entitled The Digitalization of Money. Shout out to XRP Crypto Quebec for this. And right here, I just want to highlight in, in this section right here, it goes to show about the struggle for central banks and banks in general to remain powerful, in control, and relevant. If currencies are associated with platforms, then the role of banks comes into question, not just for payments, but for other functions because they lose primary touch point. An example provided uh, the world's largest money market fund, and Ant is also dominant provider of credit scoring. Ant owns Alipay, the world's largest payment platform with dominant platforms and national currency might become secondary, raising the risk of digital dollarization, which is why I told you whatever they do with the definition of this stuff, the classification of it, it won't challenge the government money of the world. It may work as a neutral bridge asset like a convertible virtual currency or a global stable coin, but it will not be challenging the legal tender of the world. So let's keep moving here. 
lot to look at, and it sounds like price might be a lot to look at here. So 88 cents is where we're sitting right now, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. This is an old throwback. I want to play this for you to set the tone about what we're getting ready to see from Goldman Sachs. Okay, now this is Dillip Rao. It's one minute or less. Listen. So the question is to Dillip at the time in 2018 is that banks don't use XRP to facilitate transactions across borders at that time, 2018, and nor do they do that broadly right now, right? So listen to his response here about it being a phase-in business model, the software from Ripple first, then the token. No, so as I said, the X current product, the way it's implemented today, uses fiat currencies. So the convergence that we see coming in the next phase is for banks to have an option to say, do I want to use XRP? So instead of the German bank holding Turkish Lira, they could say, Akbank, uh, are you able to accept XRP and give me Turkish Lira? Here's 100 Lira worth of XRP. Here's a million Lira worth of XRP. Mm -hmm. And instantly that can be settled without having to hold balances. So that's, that's the, the holy grail. That's the ultimate end goal that we're aiming for. But if you don't have connectivity, you, know, you, you can't even start. And connectivity is a key point of what we're talking about here. And the holy grail is eventually getting banks to not just use the software and dollar-to-dollar -dollar settlement, instant settlement, not instant messaging and instant payment like on SWIFT, but instant settlement, right? But that can be done dollar-to-dollar. -dollar. But we also are talking about this. And this is 2021, April 28th, Theodore Enders, and this is Goldman Sachs Asset Management, Strategic Advisory Solutions, Cryptocurrency Blockchain. If we come right here, just to remind you, Goldman Sachs Investment Banking Company, which is really handling a revenue of $44.6 billion in 2020, and assets under management are $2.1 trillion. Okay, And what we're talking about here is their assessment of what crypto is and things in crypto, right? And what they talk about here is the fact that they laid this out and uh, what is the cost of disruption, decentralization, scalability and security, security, excuse me, decentralization. They show over here on this side here, Bitcoin, Ethereum, scalability and security here, Ripple smack dab in the middle. They say it is a global settlement network for other currencies, USD, Euro, Bitcoin and other units of value, commodities, frequent flyer miles, low transaction costs and fast settlement time, right? Okay, now over here we see in the next diagram here where they show uh, financial payment blockchains, programmable app blockchains, and basically here they're showing the connection in this pyramid here, the store of gold or, or gold store of value medium of exchange, not dependent on a single entity, uh, entity scalable scalability, and they show Ripple sitting right in front of the G7 central banks as the global settlement network for the G7 central banks. Now, I know there's a lot of people out here right now going, it says Ripple, it doesn't say XRP. You're absolutely right, it doesn't. But I just played you the clip from Dillip Rao that it is a phase-in business model. You start with the software, then you bring them to the actual full-scale intended use of using the asset XRP for settlement because you don't have to pre-fund accounts around the world. That's what we're talking about here. And when we look at this and you see when you actually, and there's another price move here maybe, right? Oh, 89 cents, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look at it before we go on. 89 cents and creeping on up. We love to hear it. So here we go. When you are referred to as a global settlement network for other currencies, including the dollars of the world and commodities of the world, you can then come out and make a call to action like Chris Larson did that says Bitcoin should move away from proof of work because of the growing CO2 emissions and the energy consumption of the network. That's big daddy pimping right there. Now, you know, everybody in the retail world can see, you know, all these different coins as maxi this, maxi that, and you're maxi this and maxi that. I'm a utility maxi. And if your coin or your token has use case utility and can solve a problem, then I'm behind it. 
I think the reality here is, is that Chris Larson's laying down a call to action for Bitcoin because the inside world of this crypto blockchain space, they understand the same thing that Goldman Sachs does, that Ripple is, in fact, a global settlement solution for the world. And when you do understand that, you can clearly understand how somebody like Anthony Pompliano can take that call to action and take up a pizza box campaign for the network that he's behind. Because you don't get to stand, as Brad Garlinghouse does, in a room with IMF, IMF officials and other financial dignitaries around the world unless you can be a global settlement system to the world. Because if you don't, then you end up doing a pizza box campaign. That's what you end up doing. Because at the end of the day, central banks are piloting a private ledger to launch their central bank digital dollars of the world. And they would never allow any network to be a part of that solution if they were using a pizza box campaign to fix the network. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Make sure you share with somebody you know and keep your head on a swivel. It's crypto out here. You just never know. Make sure you check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. By the way, I trust capital is the best crypto gold silver IRA on the planet, bar none. Link in the description for that and many other things, and they are all trusted vetted links. I'll catch you on the next one.